Welcome to today's episode of Direct Mail Automation School, the podcast for marketers who are looking for an edge as they deploy direct mail and omni-channel marketing campaigns. My name is Dennis Kelly. I'm the CEO of Postalytics, the leading direct mail automation platform designed for marketers to deploy automated direct mail and omni-channel marketing campaigns with the speed, integration, and analytics of digital marketing. Today, our guest is Mike Helms from RRD. Uh, Mike is a regional VP of sales at R.R. Donnelly, uh, which many of you know uh, is a global leader in multi-channel solutions for marketing and business communications. With over 50,000 customers and a presence in 35 countries, RRD offers a comprehensive portfolio of capabilities underpinned by Mike's expertise. Beyond his technical know-how, Mike is a conductor of collaborative brilliance, uniting creative minds to craft captivating print narratives that make a lasting impact on audiences worldwide. Through his journey in the production seat, Michael has recognized that real magic happens when innovative ideas converge. He enlivens print and marketing campaigns, connecting brands to audiences through a spectrum of integrated services and technology. Welcome, Mike. We're delighted to have you today at the Direct Mail Automation School. Yeah, thanks for having me. Flattered to be a part of it. Really, uh, really excited to to hear what you got for me. Awesome, awesome. Well, before we dive in, why don't you give us a little bit of background on you know your your career in in marketing and omni channel communications, where you started, how you ended up at the place you are today at at R. Donnelly. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, Graduating college, I started with the Hennigan Company. Um, proud to say that that's where I really, uh, really grew my roots. Uh, Hennigan was one of the most decorated high-end printers in the country. Um, and I learned there from the ground up. I fell in love with print. Uh, very near and dear to me, I was able to work with my dad for two years before he retired. Um, and uh, the fourth generation owner was my mentor, Bob Ott Jr., and again, like I said, I just fell in love with print. I uh, constantly asked the question why, stayed late to understand, you know, why we would go into UV as opposed to conventional and just really dug into the, the nuts and bolts of it uh, with, with all aspirations of going into sales. And then uh, in 2006, I moved to Detroit for sales. We really wanted to crack open the automotive space. Um, so there I packed up my entire life that I ever knew and moved to Detroit, Michigan. And, uh, and it's, it's home now. Uh, so in Detroit, uh, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a round peg and round hole for, for Hennigan, which was eventually acquired by R. Donnelly. Um, I was able to luckily get in um, with some great agencies and clients and capture some really high-end direct mail. Uh, and, you know, in, in 2006, you know, in the, in the 2006 to maybe 2010 or so, it wasn't as, as highly variable as it is today. So it would just be a, a splash of 2 million pieces with maybe a private offer. Um, so again, I was just always curious of, well, why would that audience get a thousand dollar cash back? And why would that audience get 2000 and what happens after you mail 2 million pieces? So I've wanted to really understand upstream and downstream and just constantly really force myself to be a student of the game. And, uh, and that's what I pride myself with is just constantly being a student, learning more so I can be as consultative as possible. And now, you know, after that's evolved to this this one to one communication, which we'll get into, I'm sure about how you speak to that customer with with the beautiful data that we have at our fingertips. Um, that's something I always prided myself when and with is being a, a consultant with that regard. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, you know, it it it's uh, obvious that. You know that acquisition of Hennigan and and becoming a part of RD has you know really uh, you know given you a, a, a bigger footprint and a bigger platform uh, to do that consulting through. Uh, you know when folks think of RD, uh, you know a lot of people think, hey, this is North America's largest commercial printer, mm -hmm. um, and and while that is true, 
the company has really transformed itself uh, into this massive player in the marketing services space. Uh, so just some quick stats, uh, more than $5 billion in revenue, uh, global footprint in 29 countries and 35,000 employees uh, that are focused on supporting customers across the spectrum of uh, marketing, packaging, print, and even supply chain solutions. Uh, so, you know, obviously you were working for a, a smaller print organization and now, you know, you're part of this this huge uh, global platform um, with tons of different, you know, services and, and solutions that you can bring to the table. Um, so, you know, with, with that in mind and, and from where you sit, uh, I know I'm curious and I'm, I'm sure our audience is curious about how RRD views the role of direct mail in omni-channel marketing, you know, within that environment and, and for those, you know, large global customers that you serve. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So omni-channel marketing, I mean, direct mail has to, has to live within it. And I th- I believe that that they they go hand in hand. Digital marketing and and direct mail marketing are uh, a complement supplement of each other, if you will. Um, <laughs> I like to use the analogy. You know, I sit across the table and we have a conversation. I'm likely not going to close my eyes. You know, I don't want to to close off one channel of communication. So I don't believe that it should just be all direct mail or it should just be all digital marketing. I think that they they live together cohesively, um, and that really brings the point. You know, more and more, it's 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 important to have a customer journey, to have a plan. Um, so that's what we're really trying to consult with customers: is okay, you know, who is the market that you're going after? What's that criteria? And let's develop a journey that's going to be most effective. So that if you're going to spend your budget, if you're going to spend your 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 postage, your material, your labor, your your digital assets, photography, all of that, let's make sure that we have a plan and then commit to that customer journey. And that's where I think the the omni-channel part of it is so effective with the multiple touch points to get them to ultimately convert. That's great. That's great. And, you know, we at Postalytics are completely aligned with that, uh, that thinking, uh, you know, the, the automation uh, of direct mail and the ability to connect uh, production platform with uh, the back end CRM and marketing automation solutions uh, of our customers has enabled all these new ways that uh, direct mail can augment digital and email throughout that customer journey. Uh, rather than you know simply being an acquisition or you know um, you know lead generation tool, which has been its traditional role, so uh, it, it is so important to kind of really map out that journey and and consider touch points across the spectrum of channels uh, through each of those steps. Yeah, do you get that question from your from your customers, your marketers? Like, hey, Dennis, you know we really like to develop a campaign with you. Um, can you help us map out a plan? Do they come to you with that kind of, Hey, we're just, we just want to make sure that we're capturing an audience, help us with a plan. Yeah. Yeah. You know, often, uh, we will suggest that, uh, you know, that, that folks who, who find the, the whole notion of direct mail automation appealing, but don't really know quite where to start, uh, we'll often say, Hey, let's, let's look for some low hanging fruit. Uh, and, and let's look at your existing channels uh, and and where, uh, you know, a, a little bit of uh, investment may have a big impact. And mm-hmm. so a lot of times we'll start really with what they're doing in email and and say, hey, you know, w- where are some of the, the, the points in, in, in your email infrastructure where if we added some direct mail touch points, we could boost the overall return on the campaign significantly. And, and so, um, you know, email is such low hanging fruit because when you think about it, you might get a 25 or 30% open rate on any individual email uh, campaign and, you know, across several touch points that might rise a bit, but, but, you know, email 
open rates have been declining uh, over the long haul. And, and so, uh, you know, you can use automation to just target folks who aren't open your emails, right? And, 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 you know, they're not getting your message. If they're not open the email, you're, they're not hearing from you. And, and so it's an easy sort of low hanging fruit overlay to get started where let's, let's just jump right into your, the journey that you've established via email and augment the folks who aren't open your email or your unsubscribers uh, from from your email automation and and augment that with direct mail mm -hmm. and folks are able to see you know instant uh, results uh, typically when when they make that investment so uh, that's been an area that that we've often jumped into with with customers very early in their engagements with postalytics yeah and uh, to echo that I think that's the beauty of it you can speak to them in a one-to-one -one fashion and communicate with them how they want to be communicated with. Obviously they don't, they don't see email as valuable. They don't respond to that. So then give them the channel that they do respond to. And that might be direct mail. I, I love that solution. Great, Mike. Well, you know, with that in mind, let's dig in on a specific customer example. Uh, can you tell us about a winning campaign uh, that you've been involved in that leverages multiple channels in some innovative ways? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There, there's a campaign that came to mind um, that really comes to mind, um, hand raisers. Okay, so in the in the automotive world, that's, that's a big one, um, but which it is not only in automotive, but pretty much anywhere. So a hand raiser is a very warm lead. That customer is intentionally going to the website to request more information in some fashion. So um, large OEM, we had a strategy session like and identify that is yes, short of walking into a dealership with checkbook in hand, a hand raiser is, is a customer who we want to talk to and try to convert immediately. So we developed a flow chart of okay, and the journey of okay, well, let's look at these touch points. <clears throat> If the hand raiser goes in and, and checks out, if you will, and requests more information, in this case, it was get a brochure, we would go through the journey of a digital touch point of thank you for your interest. Um, kind of, I, I kind of call it the Amazon touch point of thank you. This is, this is your uh, touch point of that you have asked for information and we are going to uh, continue that promise. And then the direct mail piece arrives. And then what's great about this solution was we scored that audience in a certain criteria to make sure, is that person six months out from a lease? Does that person have a car that's five years old with 100,000 miles? Okay, boom, they're hot. Let's give them a private offer now and try to convert them, get them to the nearest dealership. Here's the dealership right down the street. It's going to be great. Um, so that journey was a hot journey with, with multiple touch points until conversion. On the other hand, if a customer did not check out, um, we wanted to capture the anonymous shopper. So we, um, what we did is we executed a reverse IP addressing tool. Uh, so just simply putting a pixel strategically on areas of the website so that we can capture that anonymous user to his or her IP address and then drill that down to a physical mail address. And in that particular case, we couldn't hit them with IT governance uh, in a digital touch point, um, but we could send them direct mail. Same thing, we would score that audience. If they were high enough, we would send them direct mail piece. If they didn't score high enough, maybe they were just browsing on the website for whatever reason, we didn't spend the budget dollars. But both created two different parallel paths to try to create heightened awareness, heightened response and conversion. Well, I think that's uh, uh, really smart. Uh, you know, any time that you are uh, involving a campaign that involves uh, website visitors, you're going to have some mix, right, of existing customers, uh, people that are in market that might be new to the brand, uh, and then people that show up at the website because of some random search, right, that, you know, has them on a page 
for a little bit, but it, it, they're really not uh, a, an ideal uh, customer profile. Sure. And, and so uh, by using those tools and, and segmenting the, the audience that way, um, you know, I think it, it, it sounds like a really smart way of leveraging that asset and all those people that are coming to, to a website for a variety of reasons and then filtering uh, based on the, the data that is available. So that, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and, and the scoring part, being able to constantly score that audience and make sure that it was fit within the criteria of the target market, that, was, that made it very effective as well. Well, I think that makes a ton of sense. And I think it, it transitions well into our next question, um, you know, going back to R&D and some of the really innovative services uh, that have been developed over the last few years. You know, one of them really stands out. Uh, it's called Acuity by R&D. Uh, and Acuity enables marketers to test the next direct mail campaign before it's launched and uh, it, which is really incredible. And it, and it, you know, so it enables testing to occur at a fraction of the cost and time associated with traditional direct mail testing. Uh, Mike, tell us a little bit about Acuity by RRD, how it works, and how it has a big impact on the bottom line of the customers that have used it. Yeah, sure. I, I think you, you touched on two of the main points is, is time and cost. So in a normal traditional AB direct mail test, it's it's going to take four to six months to, you know, compile the assets, compile the campaign, activate the direct mail, and then see the reaction from the audience. Um, and that can be very costly too when you think of material and postage. Um, Acuity is is a virtual solution, so it's a virtual mailbox where we capture a focus group and at their leisure, at their computer, they open a virtual mailbox and see several different pieces of mail that they can sift through and interact with and engage with. Then they get to the test piece and then we track their dwell time, their handle time within that virtual execution. And we, we uh, conduct a heuristic evaluation. And that's so valuable because it takes away the Let's see, is this design going to work? Is this asset going to be effective and have an emotional tie to my target audience? And it really, that heur heuristic evaluation, that testing is great feedback for the campaign builder, the marketer to say, okay, yeah, I do need to change a couple of these things. Um, you know, this audience really um, is, is drawn to this private offer in this corner or this particular QR code activation in this corner. So it's, it's a huge way, it's a great way to quickly and effectively heighten the execution level and the success of the direct mail piece. It, it's really amazing. Uh, the fact that you can create this virtual mailbox and you know enable uh, a panel. Uh, I'm assuming the panels are, um, representative of the audience that are that, that, that are the target of the campaign and and let them browse and, and interact with a, a piece of mail in a virtual way um, you know uh, what what sort of time frame you know can these can these uh, virtual testing campaigns be done in yeah weeks weeks not months so I mean you can you can have a a really great campaign executed, tested, and um, all of the uh, all of the feedback within four to eight weeks, depending on the complexity of it. Um, now, certainly, I'm a huge fan of the physical emotion and and really uh, evaluating handle time of a physical direct mail piece. But again, when you look at the turnaround time of time and cost, this is a, a great supplemental way to. Uh, to heighten the experience and heighten the uh, success rate of a direct mail piece. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, it reminds me a lot of the um, user interface testing that a lot of software companies do prior to uh, even building out their full solutions, where they'll bring in uh, an audience and 
and the audience will react and, and you can study that and, and then just eliminate risk from uh, your design decisions. So uh, I think it's absolutely brilliant. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that as your customers are interacting with this service that they're getting, you know, huge value. Um, it, 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 in kind of a related way, uh, uh, R&D has also launched a, a really unique uh, global creative services organization called Go Creative. Uh, so, so tell us about that Go Creative footprint, uh, the types of projects that are the sweet spot for it, and and kind of how the whole thing works. Any examples of of what Go Creative does? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the key here is, you know, being a, a communication company, we have to constantly evolve and evolution is the key. I don't, I mean, I think you would say the same thing about postalytics. No one company can just stand still and hope to stay relevant. So, you know, as an organization, this platform is our largest growing platform. Uh, 8,000 employees employed in, in the Go Creative division of our company. Wow. Um, and that's, you know, former fintech executives, former CMOs, marketers, um, you know, the, the group of techies is just unreal. These guys I'm, is bleeding as technology. I can't believe, you know, huge shout out to Minaj for some of the work he's doing with me on some of the programs. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. And it's really, it's about, it's about being able to supplement our efforts from an activation standpoint and be able to consult and say, here are solutions upstream, you know, and I'm sure you see it as well. How many marketers come and say, you know what, I have this campaign. I want to launch this campaign. I could really use some help with asset management or content creation or, or the retouching. I just, I don't have a freelancer or, you know, whatever the case may be, I can't afford, you know, uh, these rates and can you help me with bundling it all together as a solution so we can activate it and the answer is yes so you know we have onshore and offshore across those eight thousand employees that i mentioned um so our rates are are very effective um and the timing as well the scale is massive so you know when when it's a huge campaign or a huge customer that needs that that overarching brand compliance and, and doing all the retouching and developing the style guides and making sure to comply to the style guides and making sure that it's one common voice. Sometimes that scale is, is super helpful. Um, so on top of that, like I said, just, just the technology, I'll, I'll give you an example. We had a, a huge pitch that, that we prepared for and um, it was with a, another large automotive customer. And we were tasked with, creating a, an online vehicle experience, uh, an unprecedented vehicle experience for the customer uh, to really engage with a new launched vehicle. So we, uh, we used generative AI and programmed within Unreal Engine. And the solution in two weeks time that our team came up with was, was Unreal. I mean, no pun. It was, it was pretty phenomenal how you look at that solution and it was, it was the vehicle driving through mountains and then the desert and you could change the background and the colors we did, we made a configurator to where it was a 360 view and colors could change. You could engage with the dashboard. It was so cool. And I just think in my mind of, wow. So to create those assets, normally we've taken months of scouting and photo shooting and retouching. Um, so the technology from this group is, is pretty phenomenal, bleeding edge. Well, that's, that's incredible. And, you know, going back to the acuity product, you know, I, I could really see the two of them, uh, working well together. Right. And, and so you're, you're compressing the time, uh, you're compressing, uh, the cost, uh, and, uh, associated with the, the the generation or the creation of of these assets, these highly effective, professional, high quality assets that are they're hard to do, and 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 so 
you know, what I love about it is consistent with, with what we're trying to do at Postalytics is, is really removing friction from the process of generating great campaigns. And, you know, uh, if, if, if you can compress the time, if you can compress the cost, if you can make things uh, it, more simple and, and uh, take the complex and make it clear and simple and easy for customers, uh, you know, then, then you're, you're, you're creating greater throughput right through your platform. And, and so both of these solutions on the creative side, uh, I, in, from where I sit, uh, really help eliminate uh, a lot of the bottlenecks that occur as customers are trying to implement campaigns. Yeah, for sure. And it's kind of have, as we've discussed in the past, I think that's, that's what's, that's what could be so special about Postalytics and RD is there's this customer facing platform and the customer gets to choose from a, a menu, a modularization strategy of, okay, well, yeah, I have a campaign. I could use help with testing my direct mail piece to make it sure it's most effective. And absolutely, I have some retouching that needs to be done in some page layout that I could uh, use some help with and check the box. And now there's this perfect cohesion to, like you said, build a campaign that's the most effective as you can possibly get at, at a great price. Exactly, exactly. And you know, that's so important uh, and to everybody sure. today. So, um, so you know, as a, a bit of a uh, omni-channel marketing nerd uh, that I am, uh, obviously I'm hosting a podcast called Direct Mail Automation School. Uh, I spent a lot of time reading research and uh, RRD has developed a, a, a tremendous body of research. Um, I was checking out this uh, recent uh, report around this concept of opti-channel uh, marketing. And uh, I guess aside from adding yet another variant to the pile of phrases that we use to describe the use of multiple channels together in marketing, uh, there were some really cool uh, conclusions, uh, and and a couple that stood out to me. Sixty eight percent of the marketer surveys surveyed said that large scale changes to the the big social and digital platforms over the last six months have influenced their digital marketing strategy, and seventy one percent of them have reallocated budget from digital to direct mail and other print channels as a result. So that's number one. Marketers are seeing this changes that are happening at the big platforms and, and thinking, hey, I gotta, I gotta move some budget around as a result. Um, at the same time, 38% of the respondents struggle to uh, effectively track response rates in direct mail. Um, so kind of pain point there, right? How, how can we track Who's responding and and what are they doing? And then third, eighty nine percent of the respondents are now deploying QR codes in their print material. Uh, so you know, huge trend there, obviously. Uh, so kind of three big things going on, and you know, you see this playing out all the time in the real world uh, with your customers. Um, you know, give us a, a sense of of kind of what your customers are saying and, and how that's uh, how that's being uh, parlayed into change and innovation in the, the uh, types of campaigns that, that you're observing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, <laughs> you nailed it. It's like as soon as as soon as omni channel might get a little bit stale or you're sick of saying it too much, let's call it opti channel. <laughs> let's keep evolving multi channel, opti channel. Let's keep using these bud words, buzzwords to uh to make our sentences as relevant as possible. But uh, but no, I'm with you. Yeah. What I see is in 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 some of the clients I work with is it's almost like it's almost like a highway. The the digital communication has so much traffic right now. There are just as you said it, I mean, in email just isn't as effective as it once was to get a promotion across. I mean, sure, some people activate it and we're never going to put these down. 
So there's gonna there's going to be digital solutions that are going to be effective, but direct mail is a lane that doesn't have as much traffic. And I think it could easily be the new new. And and, and it actually is becoming the new new. Um, it's a great way to to capture the audience um, and give them another channel to activate within. So the answer is yes, I, I'm seeing a spike in direct mail activity. And here's a perfect example. We have uh, we've largely invested, made a huge capital investment in uh, direct mail digital equipment at two of our locations that are going to be online in Q4. So. That tells you we're uh, we're putting the chips on the table for direct mail production execution and hopefully in a massive way. Um, as far as the the re, the response rates, you know, I think I think point number two and point number three go together. Uh, let's face it, you know, one thing that was relatively positive out of the pandemic was the QR code. I mean, you know, I'm sure this everyone talks about it, but you sat down at a table and you're not going to get a menu. Let's scan the QR code. Oh my gosh, this technology has been in my phone for the last 20 years. Interesting. Well, maybe not 20, but at least 10. Um, so the QR code, I think, is a perfect way to heighten that experience for direct mail, to, to, to capture that consumer at the mailbox immediately to engage in a digital, I need it now, type of execution. So I think the report, it's an interesting report and I love to see it. I wake up every morning believing it, that direct mail is still relevant and is going to uh, continue to stay relevant. And and we're seeing it. I mean, this the, the numbers don't lie. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same here with us. Uh, you know, our, our volumes have been uh, growing pretty rapidly here at Postalytics. And uh, we, you know, we did an internal study uh, that showed a uh, 75% growth in the usage of QR codes across all of our campaigns, across all of our customers as well. So uh, certainly a, a trend there uh, that uh, marketers are jumping on and, and uh, it, it enables that easy uh, uh, transition from the offline channel to the online and uh, and, and it enables marketers to know uh, precisely if you're using the right type of QR code technology, personalized QR codes, you know, hey, this was Mike Helms from this specific piece of mail. And here's where he went online uh, when when he hit that. And, and did he hit the conversion page? Did he not hit the conversion page? That then triggers additional marketing, all sorts of things that you can do once you've made the transition from you know the offline channel to the online in a way where identity is captured, and and so uh, it's a you know uh, it's a super powerful trend, and uh, we're seeing I think both of us are seeing that playing out uh, every day. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, and I'm still very passionate about the, the the old school etiquette of the customer, right? That 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 relationship and i think i think it's easier to create that relationship um through a physical piece i mean like it or not i mean how many people say you know on their birthday it's great to receive a birthday card i mean that's low-hanging fruit for a brand to recognize that it's your birthday and it's just it's just another way to say hey you know what that brand cares about me that brand obviously knows me and that brand cares that it's my birthday that's pretty cool um high value and it can be it can be low cost <clears throat> same thing with like the anniversary of a brand there's still that etiquette around there like you know hey it's been one year since you've had your vehicle or since you've lived in your home and i just want to say hey thank you for being a part of the brand this is just it, it's just easy to just make that touch point and create that brand loyalty uh, and that's why i i love direct mail that physicality of it yeah, you're absolutely right, and and so few brands do it uh, that that when you do just leverage your data, let automation send out those those postcards and letters to uh, uh, remind people, hey, it's been a year, it's been two years, it's been three years since we started working together, or uh, your birthday is is coming up, you know, here's a coupon to come visit our restaurant, um, mm -hmm. you know. 
those little things make such a huge difference in brand loyalty. And, you know, uh, it's hard to get new customers. It's far more cost effective to hang on to the customers you already have. So uh, it makes all makes a ton of sense. Uh, well, well, Mike, we got to wrap things up here. Uh, and so I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, and uh, in case any of our customers want to get any of our audience wants to get in touch with you, um, how would they learn more about, you know, you and uh, all the great solutions that are Donnelly? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a surgeon on call, Dennis. My, my phone never turns off. So, uh, you know, certainly uh, 248-207-0690. Anyone can ever call if they have any inquiries. Uh, certainly learn more about R. Donnelly at rd.com. Um, there's some great testimonials, some great stories, all kinds of deep dives into capabilities that we just talked about today. And um Certainly my email is michael.r.helms, H-E-L-M-S at rrd.com. And I'd, I'd love to, uh, yeah, to share any stories and, and listen to any stories alike. So thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, Michael Helms, R. R. Donnelly, really appreciate you coming on Direct Mail Automation School today. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks again.